So, we've got an anxious Doby in the car. Do you want to hold the camera? You can hold the camera. Yeah, but let's see what happens. Because when, when you turned up, you could, I mean, you done re already. You done really well in not letting him out of the car before you done it, but you still let out an anxious mind. Yeah, yeah didn't like that, did you? See, he sees when the boat's open, oh, I'm somewhere, and he gets worked up, yeah? And you've done a good job, you was pushing him back, you was touching him and things like that, and then he sat, after about five minutes, he finally got the memo, but you still let out an anxious mind, so he still, even though he was sitting and not trying to progress, you let out an anxious mind. Then he come into my house, then he's running around the garden, excessively marking and salivating, yeah? All the salivating stopped, it's less about words and more about actions right now. So little pressure points holding him here, nice and tight like that. Then almost massage like, keeping that nice and chilled out. Stepping away. What I want is calm, just focusing on that calmness. So he's no longer trying to come out. Because for him, the biggest challenge is state of mind. It has nothing to do with obedience anymore with this dog. We know that. We know he can heal when you ask him to. We know he knows sit down, come. but every time you ask him to do these things, he's doing it in such an excitable state. What started as an excitable dog has now gone past the point of this. So I take my time with a dog like this. Everything has to be nice and chilled out. You have to almost just feel yourself. And then the lead comes the lead, the lead, which is another thing that will create excitement. He's looking, waiting for that release, but he's not going to get that straight away. I'm just taking my time. I'm just going to sit at. And again, if he starts getting worked up, see these little shoulders? It's little shoulders, they're big shoulders. <laughs> just apply a little bit of pressure. I'm not squeezing to hurt him. I'm not squeezing that's making him back away or uncomfortable. I'm just adding pressure. And you can see he's breathing lower when I do it. What I'm looking for is that gentle breathing because. Like I said, when you brought him in and I was obsessing, uh, assessing what he's like, the whining started, the salivating started. This is perfect. Legs to the side, nice relaxed state. Everything is about keeping him in. So I don't care about the eye contact. This goes against a lot of what I say in my videos. I always wait for eye contact and everything. But often I'm dealing with a nervous dog looking for that guidance coming from the handler and things like that. Or I'm looking for a dog that just has no impulse control, that wants to do whatever he wants. This dog, I'm dealing with a real anxious mind. Yeah, that people don't see because he looks like a happy-go-lucky dog. So more than obedience, I'm looking for that. See, look, you see? The, the whining started. A little bit of pressure. Then the yawn, letting it go. Yeah, so for him, if you took him out for a two hour walk and this took you an hour, I would take that off of the two hour walk because this is what's gonna really help him out, yeah? I want him to really go into a nice calm state, almost massage type. Breathe. And you have to focus on your breathing. A dog like this is great for your patience, great for reminding you why you train dogs. I want a really, really relaxed mind. But no more trying to come out. So if he does it, a little bit of pressure. Back into that sit. Let go. Breathe. Nice. This is what he needs. Because we know he can go and go and go. But what he can't do is switch off. Yeah. He can do it indoors, can't do it outside, take him anywhere, he doesn't stop. He's in two minds, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do? Laying down, that's nice. Nice calm state, look at the back legs, the back legs are to the side, they're not in a pouncing position. Come on in. Then you can bring him out. And then you see he done that little shake. That's a calming signal. 
And again, just because we're out, wait. See, he's getting excited. Again, calm down, take your time. Sit. Slowly lead off. Slow. He wants to go 100 mile an hour. I want to slow it right down. Slow, slow, slow. Nice and slow. Because it's all about trying to keep that. I could excite this dog in a heartbeat, mm. but that's only going to lead to anxiety. Remember, this is an excitable case. He's friendly, but he's gone past the point of excitement that is now anxiety. And this is what people see, is what I see every day. And this is what people aren't recognizing. They're thinking their dog's happy because it's running around like a lunatic. But when a dog can't perform basic tasks that you know they know, they're no longer excited, they're anxious, they cannot contain themselves. What I want is almost like this, I move, you move. I turn around, you turn around. Like almost this in sync where we're bouncing off of one another. Less words, more just focusing on how you feel. That's quite common in Dobbins, so that is that pause on your shoulder. My last one did the same. But whether it's going into a house, whether it's going into your car, because you said he eats the car. He'll eat the car. <laughs> yeah. He'll eat the car. He turned up with a muzzle on like he's Hannibal Lecter, and you're a friendliest dog I know. <laughs> but again, it's anxiety, what the car represents. The car represents we're going somewhere, and I have no idea how to behave anymore in that environment. So he, that anxiety yeah. comes out as eating the car. When, you, when I open my front door, he knows that he has to wait at thresholds, but the anxiety has taken over that he can't even wait at a threshold anymore, when you know he knows this. And that's where a lot of people go wrong. Whereas when I said, right, come on, let's go outside, I sat at the door for 10 minutes, waited for him to completely lay down, but I didn't ask him to lay down because I know he'll lay down if I ask him to. It's the state of mind that I'm looking for with this dog. This is, this is dog behavior at its finest. Yeah, this, this is where obedience does matter, don't get me wrong, it's important that he listens to us, but this is where focusing on what's going on in here and inside is more important than the sit, stays, come, whatever. I like you. Right, we're gonna go to the shop and then we're gonna say what you like when we get back. Mind your head. Hold on, let me unclip your lead. So the word we use is duck and he does, duck. He, he, he knows that the door's about to close. All right, duck. <laughs> and a boy, <laughs> stop that there. I don't know. Let, let's just have a look. So this is Otto. So a lot of people will look at this as a dog going around having a whale of a time. But a dog, when they come into a new environment, they're meant to go around and explore. But he's... And this is, this is the second time now he's been in mine. Gates open. Uh, uh, You've got to make sure that catch is right down. But I'm going to let Otto explore again. But then what we're going to do is we're going to go and bring Otto inside and we're going to let Otto chill out. <sighs> but even though he's excited, he's not as bad as the first time he came in. He's not salivating anymore. No. When, when he first came in, he, gets so, he got so worked up running round and not knowing what to do that he was slobbery. He looked like a mastiff. Mm. Uh, when your typical dog that's not known as a slobbery breed is salivating like that, mm. that's, uh, that's anxiety, mm. yeah? But he's going around in a calmer state. Mm. He's still excitable. So he still needs, obviously, to do exercises where he can be free and everything, but you also need to work on a hell of a lot of 
exercises where he just learns to do nothing in environments where he'd normally be doing something. Otto, and we on my washing. So let's bring Otto in the house. And of course, Otto's got no recall, so we'll be interested to no, see. No, no, he, he will definitely come back under these. Uh, Otto, come. That's it. Otto, come. Ah. Otto, come. Otto, come. Yeah, I know. Good lad. Well done. Good boy. Alright, so we're going to shut that door. I'm going to take the phone, it is recording. So, right. don't push recording because it's already recording. I'm just going to take a lead. Right. I'm going to take Otto. I'm going to clip him. Do his lead. I'm just going to ask him to. That's it. And I don't want him to do anything else. What I want is this, like that. I want him just to chill out, yeah? It's eye contact with you. Yes. Yeah. So you're saying he doesn't normally give... You know, he, he, uh, um, uh, only in the last month have I been working on trying to get more... And, I'm, and as a result, I'm getting but better the, results. This, this, this is what my Rottweiler is, is like at the end of a walk. Hmm. When I've taken her out and, we, and she's explored and she's done things, she comes back, she lays down, she's exhausted. He's run around my garden, but that tells you the state of mind that he's in. He's in such an anxious state. Mm. He's in such an anxious state that he sort of wants to collapse, but then he's right back up. He's like, yeah. So, what I would be doing with a dog like Otto is two or three times a week, instead of letting him run around a field where he can just do that, and we know he can do it, I'd be taking him to the same fields where he normally runs around, and I'd be focusing on just sitting there chilling out. The weather's getting nice now, so just practice you and your dog chilling out. Yeah. Because these are what he doesn't do. He goes from zero to 100, and you've conditioned the athlete in him, like I said. Because he's always been quite a high energy dog, You've tried to match that, so you've had him running along a bike, you've had him running around on a long lead off lead. All of the exercises he's been doing have been excitement based and physically demanding, mm. which has only created an athlete. Yeah, it's like I said when we spoke about it earlier, going to the gym. You go to the gym, you start with doing small weights, and the more comfortable you get with it, you do bigger weights and bigger weights and bigger weights. Or like running. You'll start by doing five minutes on a treadmill, then you're doing 10 minutes, and before you know it, you're doing more and more because that is what that is what happens when you train, and that's effectively what you're doing with him. So you're making a dog that is more and more energetic, mm. yeah? But because he doesn't know how to switch off at anywhere outside of the house, that energy and excitement has turned to anxiety, and he doesn't know what to do anymore. Yeah. So he needs a lot more of this. It's a very boring video when I <laughs> upload it, but it's very, very primal. Very just... Just being. Yes. And then the next stage is to teach him to do this with a dog, because again, apparently he's even worse when he sees a dog. <sighs> oh yeah. Yeah, nice calm state. I want to be able to drop the lead. And this is what I want to do. Door open. See how it feels about that. Because the door open, and what I'm basically doing, without saying anything, is just challenging his mind. That door is open now, where you could technically, if you want, run to the high heavens, but he also knows I'm expecting a certain level of calmness out of him. He also knows that I'm taking my time with him for him to calm down. Whereas if most people make their dog lay down and open the door, the dog's out there like a rocket. Because they've asked the dog to lay down, but they didn't concentrate on the state of mind of the dog. So right now he's stuck between two minds. He's still in that relaxed position. That's a nice yawn. But he's choosing to. And when a dog starts to choose a decision to stay in this state of mind over that crazy state of mind, it tells you that that crazy state of mind that they're in, they don't really like to be in that state of mind. They just don't know any other way. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the door is wide open now, and he's still there. And I haven't asked him to stay. I didn't tell him to wait. This is all 